Hello everyone, back to you into today's second video. We're going to have a look at the ECMWF 30 day model for today's second video. Uh, we're going to go four weeks out, which takes us into September, and uh, we shall see what the uh, ECM model is forecasting in terms of temperature and precipitation anomalies for the UK and for the wider European continent as well. So I'll go up for you very shortly. Just say that the first video release uh, this morning had a look at the weather for the Ashes and the Beautiful Days Festival, which is coming up uh, from tomorrow through to the weekend. Uh, it's going to be pretty unsettled for uh, those events, so have a look at that, see what's going on there. And we're going to have the week 10-day video update coming up uh, later on this afternoon on the homepage at gavsweathers.com as uh, usual. We're at the Hungarian Met Office uh, for this update, so a big thank you to them for supplying us with charts. We can't show you mean sea level pressure or 500 millibar heights, unfortunately, with this, um, but you can get a rough idea of what model is forecasting from its temperature and precipitation anomalies. So I'll get on with it uh, for you right now. We're going to start off with uh, the week one temperature anomaly for our forecast period. It's week 33 for the year. So um, this is how things are looking from the 12th through to the 18th of August. The coming week looks pretty cool, actually, for many parts of uh, Europe. Down in the Mediterranean, so from southern parts of France through the Mer, particularly towards Italy, and then uh, down into southeastern corner, um, we find that the temperature anomaly is a little bit above average in some of those areas, as I say, especially focused on uh, Italy. Uh, but really, that's about it for warm and average temperature anomalies. So, uh, for much of Europe, it's looking quite cool. So we have the UK, Ireland and France coming out cooler than average. Also got uh, the low countries cooler than average there through uh, Belgium and Holland. Got Germany cooler than average, Poland below average, up to Scandinavia, so Denmark is uh, below average, and many central and southern parts of Norway and Sweden cooler than average as well. The far north of Scandinavia is a little bit uh, warmer there up towards the Arctic Circle, a little bit warmer than average. And then on this eastern side, generally it's a bit on the cooler than average side as well. I have got Ukraine, but it's a little bit uh, warmer into the far southwest of Russia. But generally it's quite a cool scene really through um, most parts of Europe in uh, the week ahead. Uh, temperatures generally between around 1 and 3 degrees below average. So pretty chilly really uh, in weekend. And also quite unsettled in the northwest. This is the precipitation anomaly for week 1. Uh, week uh, 33 for the year. It's wetter than average in the northwest of Europe. So most of Scandinavia forecast to be wetter than average. Um, the low countries wetter than average. Northern France into the UK and Ireland all having above average rainfall. Uh, then there's a uh, sort of slice of near normal to slightly drier conditions through the rest of France and then through uh, southern and central parts of Germany up in towards uh, western parts of Poland and then going up into this far northeast and Baltic Sea sort of area. Uh, Mediterranean generally on the drier than average side uh, there, so not too bad down in there. Going to be a lot of dry weather on offer in the week ahead. Uh, and then we go over towards the Black Sea and up towards Ukraine. So it's dry and average there, a bit wet and average through southern parts of uh, Poland. So very variable from area to area. But the general idea, I think, is drier than average through the Med, wetter than average in that northwestern corner. And then other areas are kind of like varying from country to country. We go through to week 34 for uh, this year, 2019. Week two for our forecast period. Quite a change takes place now. Uh, so it's been a very, very cool summer across western parts of Russia and the far east of Europe. But you'll see that in this week, it's actually going much warmer in this extreme eastern side of Europe and into western parts of Russia. In fact, some parts of western Russia are going up to three to six degrees warmer now. It's been a very, very long time since uh, that happened across western Russia. So the far east, northeast of Europe and western Russia turning warmer. Otherwise, again, it looks a relatively cool scene, uh, really. So particularly focusing around sort of Germany, back to France, into the UK and through to Ireland. Um, cooler than average in all of those areas. The coolest anomalies around one to three degrees uh, below average. So it is a pretty 
cool week again from the 19th to the 25th of August there. Scandinavia is going up towards average, except for Denmark, where it's a bit cooler than average, so closer to average for much of Scandinavia. I mean, down in the Med, uh, looks a little bit cooler, actually, through the Mediterranean uh, this week compared to week one. Most central and western parts have made close to or a little bit below average. The far southeast of the uh, Mediterranean and up towards the Balkans, possibly hinting, being uh, closer to average or maybe a little bit warmer there. Precipitation-wise, that's changing a little bit too. So it's going rather drier out in the far west and northwest. So again, for Ireland, for UK, for France, for Spain, for Portugal, driving average conditions here. So high pressure probably is starting to re-establish also in towards the low countries as well. With a wetter than average conditions, kind of like being forced into more central parts of Europe. So uh, parts of Sweden and over towards the Baltic Sea and then down into central Europe. So sort of East Germany into Poland. Uh, it's looking uh, a little bit wetter than average through those regions before it goes dry than average again over towards Black Sea and up towards the, uh, in towards the south of Russia. Precipitation through Mediterranean, it's dry than average for Spain and Portugal. The central bowl of the Med looks average to a bit drier than average. Italy hints at being a little bit wetter than average, especially in the north. I mean, if anything, down towards Greece and Turkey, probably hinting being on the drier than average side too. This week, it looks as though high pressure is beginning to develop to the west southwest of Europe, possibly a ridge extending in from the uh, Azores high. So we may have some high pressure setting up down here. Low pressure is probably through here, and then I would have thought another ridge is likely to be over there. Low pressure is through there. So a real trough ridge type pattern with uh, something like that potentially happening uh, with the flow and with the jet stream. Uh, let's go through to week three. This is taking us, of course, to the very beginning of September. So this takes us from the 26th of August through to the 1st of September. And then why it's going uh, warmer than average across many parts of Europe. So we end August on quite a warm note, actually. Uh, you'll see down in the far south of Europe, through the Mediterranean, close to average with a temperature anomaly there. But otherwise, warmer than average, really, Scandinavia is uh, sort of one to three degrees above average. Ireland, UK, uh, around one degree above average. Many parts of Central Europe, Germany, uh, over towards Poland, over towards Ukraine even, uh, one to three degrees above average through those areas too. So quite a warm week uh, there for the final week of August. Temperatures going widely above average, presumably as high pressure is establishing across many parts of uh, Northern Europe. Precipitation anomalies are weakening. Uh, as they often do by the time you get through to week three. So the precipitation anomaly for the 26th of August, 1st of September. Overall hints at being driving average in the north of Europe. So I assume this is where uh, we've got all of the high pressure sitting up here. And then it looks a little bit wetter than average down across southern Europe. So the Mediterranean looks like it's going a bit wetter than average. So presumably some sort of thundery low developing through the Med. But most parts of Europe are, are dominated, I would have thought, by high pressure uh, here. So it's either average or drier than average with a fairly warm signal for the final week of August. And then finally, we go through to week four. It's week 36 for, uh, for 2019. So another change here is going from the 2nd through to the 8th of September. It looks as though those warmer than average anomalies have sort of been moved over towards the eastern side of Europe. So everywhere from around Poland eastwards to the Black Sea just there. Uh, coming out uh, above average, significantly more than average, at around uh, 1 to 3 degrees above average through the east of the southeast of Europe. At the same time, northern and western parts of Europe seem to be going closer to average. They're beginning to lose those warmer average temperature anomalies through the first week of September, perhaps in the north and the west of Europe, although... Still probably on the warmer than average side, but much closer to average through this period, with the real warmth looking like it's being pushed into the east, the southeast of Europe, 
precipitation anomalies. Finally, for the first week of September, week four, very, very weak as you always find at this point. It looks dry on average to the north of the UK, so possibly hinting at higher pressure beginning to go northwards again. Been a recurring theme over the past few months. High pressure starting to shift northwards up towards Iceland, perhaps. A weak signal for France to be wetter than average and to the west of Portugal. So this could be telling us that sort of western parts of Europe are starting to turn more unsettled. Maybe low pressure coming back with the jet stream as high pressure is beginning to push northwards again, possibly hinting at some high pressure setting up somewhere around the Norwegian Sea or over towards Iceland. That would be northern blocking, of course, and would probably allow low pressure to come in from off the Atlantic. Don't show anything particularly dry on this eastern side, but you would have thought also we would have a ridge of high pressure over here, given how warm the temperature anomalies are in this eastern, southeastern corner. So probably some sort of uh, ridge continuing in the east and southeast of Europe, blocking going north and low pressure maybe undercutting into the west and southwest of Europe. However, these are very, very weak signals. So uh, really, um, it's uh, a little bit too... Uh, the signal is a little bit too weak to have anything, have any confidence in that. But that would be the interpretation of the way things are shifting as we get through to weeks three and four. So quite a changeable four weeks coming up. We start off cool and unsettled across many parts of Europe. We sit, we shift to something drier and warmer by the time we get through to the last week of August. And then early September possibly signs that the warmth gets shifted over towards the east and the southeastern corner of Europe as it perhaps begins to turn cooler and more and settled again out to the north and the west. That's four weeks away, though. Very weak signals and a long, long way off. Right, that's it for the ECMDF 30-day look ahead for uh, this week. We'll do it all over again next week. Remember, it's just a snapshot of what Molly's showing today. It could look very different next week. Any forecast over five to seven days comes with a huge pinch of salt and a huge health warning. So could all look really different uh, next week. We'll be back later on uh, with the week's 10-day video update. So come back for that later on this afternoon. But that's all for now, and thanks for watching.